At the 2025 Consumer Electronics Show, I was pleased to see Xpeng with a new display this year. The Chinese company develops electric vehicles and humanoid robots. Recently, their aero division has begun public flights of this new electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicle. I have Benny with me here, and she is with Xpeng Aero, and she's going to answer some of our questions about the land aircraft carrier that's on display here. So, Fanny, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, thank you. This is actually the first time that we bring the land aircraft carrier to the CS 2025. And this is the first time it's on the global stage. It's very exciting. Now, can you give us a description of what's going on here? Because we have seen this a little bit before in our reporting, but I'd love to hear from your perspective, not only how you envision people using this, but the product itself. Tell us how it works. Okay, yeah. Please come closer. Yes. So with only one click, this aircraft can actually separate it from the car's trunk. And so far, this is the world's firm mechanism to separate and reconnection automatically by itself. So... Um, this is this is happening. It's it's not just a concept. I've seen it working on the videos that you guys have posted. So essentially, what this is is it holds a giant drone or eVTOL. What would you describe it best it's, as? It's eVTOL. So okay. it can fit two people in the aircraft, and it's powered by electricity. So the car is hybrid. Yes. So it can be like a giant power bank. It can keep recharging the aircraft for maximum six times. So like it is not just a one-time flight, but you can actually experience it with your friends and family together. Now, how long would a flight uh, be able to last when you're riding around in one of these? And how do you see people using this? Yeah, so there is two paths. One is for individual users like you, for example. You can go with your friends, your family together. And the second path is for emergency rescue, like public services, for example, like the medical rescue, the highway accidents, you know, that kind of scenarios can be a great use in it. And so I'm envisioning that you would be able to go out really far to drive your hybrid uh, the actual carrier itself here, and then be able to deploy this to kind of go around in different areas to explore, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the car, it is extended range. The combined range is about 1,000 kilometers. So you can actually go for a long distance travel with this, with your family, if it's four people. I mean, that is going to be a, a great trip. For the car, actually, you, it looks kind of big, but actually just fit in the standard parking lots and the undergrounds. Mm -hmm. So you, with a normal driver license, is able to drive this vehicle. But for the aircraft, you might need a special license, pilot license for that. But it supports two operation modes. One is autonomous, and the other one is manual control. And with manual control, you only need to use one joystick to control the flight, which is very easy to operate and very easy to learn it. So um, no stress. When, when is this going to be? going into full production and when are people going to be able to get a hold of it and what's the price mm -hmm. so uh, the next step is going to be we're going to complete the construction of the mass production factory by this year and also we're going to obtain the type certification by this year and then the next step is going to be by 2026 we're going to mass produce and deliver it me i would think that something like this would be a few hundred thousand dollars just because of the complexity of something like that and how big this is. Okay, a few hundred thousand yes. dollars. Okay, actually, um, currency, the estimated price in China market is about 2 million RMB. So in U.S. dollars, it's like 300,000 U.S. Yeah, dollars. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See, I was close. <laughs> I know that it is a uh, range extended vehicle, as you said, so it's a hybrid of sorts. But can you talk about what's the capacity for the battery? So how many kilowatt hours are we looking here? Yeah, so currency for the battery, uh, actually that parameter we haven't uh, confirmed yet. We haven't finalized yet. But you can see there is six wheels. It looks very special. It's like a new species when you drive it on the roads. And actually it's real wheel steering and all wheel drive. So you, actually you can go a little bit off road with it. So, and in this case, the electric propulsion is always driving it because it sounds like that gas tank is going to be a generator. Yes, yes, okay. a generator. Perfect. We have already received 3,000 in 10 orders from the Chinese market. And in the future, I mean, um, we always want to go globalize. So in the future for the overseas marketing strategy, it's going to be um, reviewed soon. I 
think it's really cool that we've seen the carrier here, but I would love to see a closer look at the actual EV toll. Yes, yes. yes. So let's go. Let's go. Okay, great. Let's do it. Can you tell us a little bit more as far as the specifications on this one and what the battery capacity is and uh, the flight time? Okay, um, so currently for this flight time, it will be used for a short distance fun. Like, this is our first step product. It's used for personal flight experience. So uh, before, if you go on a helicopter, if you want to fly in the sky, it's going to cost you uh, like a lot. And also you will need to like take a lot of time to go to the airport and then have some, uh, finally you can get flights. But this one is carried by the car. So actually by self-driving, you carry the aircraft and then separate for like five minutes and then you can already take a flight. So it's for making the flights more accessible for everyone and you can see that there is a six rotors here mm -hmm. and it is mainly made of carbon fiber so it's the materials that we usually use for the supercar but it's even better than that because it's aviation carbon fiber so it's ultra lightweight and with a high strength so can you talk a little bit more about the redundancy here because we have a lot of electric motors here and i know that's really common in ev tools so how many motors can be operating and if one goes out what happens yeah, so we will make sure that all the components, they have at least dual to triple redundancy safety designed. Uh, for example, we did the test for the rotor failure. Two rotors fail in the sky, like when it's in the air, and it still can hover safely and then land safely. So uh, we will make sure that there is redundant safety design in the vehicle. And how high can this fly? Or is that based yeah. on kind of like what the requirements are for whatever country you're flying in? Mm -hmm. So it is designed uh, under 1,000 kilometers because that is the low altitude. And what we are focusing on is the low altitude air mobility. Um, but I mean, it also depends on the regulations. For example, in the city or the urban area, they might have different requirements for the heights. And is there a port on the outside of the car that you can plug it into and then plug it in here when you're ready to recharge it? Or does it have to sit in the the back of the vehicle to recharge yeah yeah this this <laughs> is a lot of people wondering and we're gonna announce that information later so stay tuned i'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> can you tell me a little bit more about what is happening on that screen on the screen you can see there uh, how high you're going and also the speeds and then the temperature and the wind so you can see a lot of parameters of the environments here and then you can see there is a single stick here and that is very easy. You can see that it's much different from the helicopters or the planes because it doesn't have a complicated operations for you. Autonomous mode, you only need to sit inside and then you put down your address in the screen and then buckle up, close the door and that's basically it. And when you're doing the manual control and then you sit inside, using this, pull forward, backward and then uh, maybe up. Uh, so it's very easy. We have guests in our headquarters to experience the simulator room. And when he sits inside, it only takes him like a few minutes to, to get a hand of it. So it's very easy to learn. Now we did actually see last year, you guys had a booth as well with the flying car here, which was amazing. Is there any uh, potential for that to go into production as well? Mm -hmm. So that is our third step product. It's called Evito flying car. The propellers can actually spread out from the car. And that one is more towards the future because um, it needs to wait for all the infrastructure to get mature so that we can have the real flying car. And also we have the second step product, it's called X5. So far it's an internal code name yet. Um, so that one is a two rotor aircraft and that can go for intercity flights because it can go for longer range and higher speeds. And that one is our second step product. Is, how many passengers is that? six passengers. Oh wow, so a lot bigger than uh, what we see right yeah. here. <laughs> yes, yes. So uh, it's like first step is going to be the modular flying car for personal fun and then the second step is going to be the two rotor aircraft for an intercity flight a longer range and then the third step is going to be the Evito flying car. Finally you can go to work and go to school with it. Well this has been such a treat Fanny. Thank you so much for spending time with us and walking us through all of this and we are very much looking forward to all those future products that you talked about as well so we appreciate it. It. Thank you. Thank you.